I'd like to talk about my group's recent work in physics-based learning for computational imaging. Computational imaging is this idea that you design your hardware and your software of your imaging system to work together well. What we'd like to get into here are moving beyond that regime into a place where we start using machine learning or algorithms to design the imaging system itself and figure out how to best encode the information. Here's an example. This is a lensless imager that's just a sensor with a bumpy piece of plastic in front of it. This might be privacy glass sticker that you put on your window so your neighbors can't see in. You take a picture and it looks like total garbage, but this is carefully structured garbage and from this Im single image we can reconstruct our scene. We call this diffuser cam. Here's an example of the raw data and the reconstructed scene. Uh, this is a 2D reconstruction. Because there's a lot of multiplexing happening here, we can actually take those single images and reconstruct 3D information. And so that means we can get take a single 2D video like this that sort of just looks like scattered mess and reconstruct 3D images. In this case, it was in a microscope where we're looking at these little tardigrades or water bears from UCSF. Construction algorithm involves an iterative approach. In this case, we're using ADMM. You could also use FISTA or other various iterative approaches that try to minimize the difference between your measurement and the expected measurement given your current estimate, while you iteratively update the estimate of the object that you're trying to get at. And you might put some uh, regularization or sparsity, like sparsity constraints, etc. I call it a physics-based approach or model-based image reconstruction, because this A matrix here represents the forward model of how you, how you know the physics of light propagating through your system. And that's really important in how this, uh, how this information gets used to solve for the reconstructed scene. You could also go in a totally different direction and try to use deep learning by training a network, which can then be used to input a, an original measurement and spit out the final result. So the network relies on having to learn the physics through training examples. There's pros and cons to both of these. In particular, these physics-based networks tend to be very interpretable and robust, but they can be slow. And when that A matrix or forward model isn't perfect, you can get weird artifacts. Deep learning can fix a lot of those artifacts and be a very fast reconstruction, but it often requires a very large data set and does some strange things sometimes. We would really like to get the best of both worlds, and I think there's been a lot of really interesting work going on in this space recently, trying to use the physics that you know and learn the stuff that you don't know. What we come out with is a, a neural network that, whose architecture is defined by the physics of the situation, so it becomes very efficient, and we can get away with very little training data and get good results. With the first example that we did, Christina from my group took this diffuser cam problem uh, and unrolled the iterative algorithm such that every layer of this neural network is an iteration of that ADMM algorithm. So effectively, we've just transported this uh, iterative algorithm into a neural network, and now you can learn the parameters of the of the algorithm. Uh, this is called unrolled networks. Um, and it makes the, the network very efficient so that we can change what we learn and we can learn more or less of these different parameters. We can add parameters to learn, like putting a unit at the end once we've got a pretty good estimate. And that's what she did was, was tested this. So she looked at this diffuser cam data and then she took images with a real camera of the exact same thing so that she could train the scene, uh, train the network. And then once the network was trained, she took it out in the wild and took pictures. Uh, and then use the network to do the reconstructions. She used also these iterative algorithms uh, to show the difference. So if you look at um, the reconstructions with a physics-based network, it has some weird artifacts. Um, in this case, we're bounding how long we take to reconstruct it, um, but it's a very uh, slow reconstruction process. The deep learning case uh, is very fast, and it just has different artifacts in this case. And what was really nice was that we could show that this sort of blended version of, of physics-based learning um, can be fairly fast and also much higher quality in the image reconstructions. So you kind of get the best of both worlds um, by using physics in conjunction with deep learning. This is for image reconstruction. Uh, the next example I want to show you is for coded illumination microscope. And in this case, 
um, we're not just doing uh, machine learning for the reconstruction of the image, but we're actually trying to learn how to capture the image. And in this case, we have an LED array as our coded illuminator, and we're learning which patterns to display on the uh, source or, or illumination pattern, these are LEDs, uh, in order to get the best reconstructions with the fewest number of images needed to be captured. These are the heuristic designs versus the learned designs. Very interesting to think about the optics of why it chooses those designs. Um, but I'm not going to get into that. And here's some reconstructions. So um, if we use our heuristic design with 10 measurements versus our data-driven design with 10 measurements, we can do a lot better with the data-driven design, which was the whole point. And then finally, one more example, which is going even a step further beyond designing what the imaging system uh, captures to actually building an adaptive microscope that changes what it captures based on the data that it's receiving. So we have a pretty simple uh, version of that because it's tough to make these systems, these closed loop systems operate fast enough to be worthwhile. Uh, in this case, what we're learning is the focus position. And there's sort of a, a, a neural network trained on the Fourier space information from a off-axis coherent image to be able to learn what the focus step is and move that microscope into focus in real time. Uh, and this uh, works very well on uh, typical bright field microscope as long as you have some control over the illumination like this. So Henry has a paper on this recently on how to do this. That's all I want to talk about. I think this is really interesting directions for computational imaging and there's a lot that we can potentially do going forward. Thanks.